so excited to have Sonia Satra here with us today. She's a mind and body thought leader. She's the author of the amazing book, What If It Were Easy, which I absolutely love. It's all highlighted because I've been reading it <laughs> like crazy. In her past life, you were actually a soap opera star from Guiding Light mm-hmm. and One Life to Live, right? Hey. What did you say? You were a crazy nurse? A psycho nurse Psycho Barbara. nurse Barbara. One Life to Live. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I love it. But really, you know, I love the book and we're going to get into what the book is about and kind of your strategy behind the book. But I love using movement and mindset to create success in life love and business. Mm. And what I loved so much about this, I told you before we started um, filming that I've been using the phrase on the front cover because it is so impactful when you think about it, right? right. What if it were easy? What, what if everything were easy? So so talk about, well, first of all, welcome to the yeah, show. Yeah. No, thank you. <laughs> so I'm excited. really excited to be here and to talk to you yeah, about it. Yeah, I'm so excited. So talk to me about the phrase, what if it were easy? And I mean, you talk about it in the book, yeah. about where it came from, but I think it's a really impactful story. So why don't you share that story about it? It definitely it did. It started with my husband, mm-hmm. um, who sounds a little bit like your <laughs> my boyfriend, <laughs> boyfriend <laughs> who uh, is definitely a very like, you know, worst case scenario, thinks a lot. And, you know, he's amazing uh, at what he does. But he had at the time, he was a producer and he had what they call a first look deal. So he was basically paid for ideas. The company, you know, seemed to be pretty happy. And we were in New York at the time. They were in LA and they were like, yeah, we want you to come in and meet with us. So we flew out to LA. I just had a baby and uh, we figured, great, we'll go out. We'll have a little trip. He'll sign. We'll celebrate and life will go on, right? Well, he goes, I'm sitting in the car with the baby and he comes out looking white as a ghost. I'm like, well, how did it go? And he's like, I was fired. <laughs> we were like, <laughs> the words nobody wants to Nobody hear. wants to hear and not even like at all expected, you know, and there's the baby sleeping in the back, right? And you're just like, oh, uh oh, what are we going to yeah. do? Um, and so, you know, like anything, we're like, okay, well, we'll figure it out. What do we need to do? What has to happen? What could we, you could do this, you could do that. I could do this, I could do that. He was just going down that rabbit hole of like, no, this is a disaster. This is awful. Like, right. nobody can make it in this business. You know, one of yeah. those, those things. And uh, I was like, well, somebody's made it. You can too. And he always, since a young age, I think he had experienced a significant amount of, we'll call it instability, death, maybe from, you know, in his family Mm -hmm. of origin. So having sort of that nest egg was really important to him. And so having in his mind, a million dollars was safety. Now, I guess it would have to be more. But, you know, at the time it was a million, which still seemed ridiculous, right? We didn't need that. But he was like, wow, nobody can make a million dollars. I'm like, if somebody can make it, you can do it. And uh, still spiraling, no, 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 I can't do it. It's impossible. And finally, my little coaching hat is like, say something, do something. (laughs) (laughs) You've got to inspire. Exactly. (laughs) I'm like, well, what if it were easy? What would you do? And at first the resistance, but it's not, you know? And I was like, yeah, but what if it were? And in that moment, he's like, well, I don't know. I guess if it were, I'd start my own company, you know? And Mm. it's sort of sarcastically. And I was like, really? That had never, ever come up in any of our conversations. We talked about this a lot. So we started to, you know, figure that out. Next day, he called a friend, started a business and... Within a year, he made a million dollars. So that just gave me goosebumps, like hearing, I mean, I read it, but like that just literally gave me goosebumps because I think what it does is you almost unlocked possibility. Exactly. In his brain, right? Yes. Of, well, what if? Yes. The question. And it you feel opens like it, your heart. And mm-hmm. for people, many of us are, right? We overthink, we get stuck in our heads and it moves it down a little bit mm. into your heart of like, well, what would I do? What would be, you know, what would I love to do? Yeah. What if it were easy? I do this. And I ask myself that question all the time now. And it's amazing how I could have my long to-do list of all these things I need to do, need to do. What if it were easy? What would I do? It's like not even anywhere close to what's yep. on that list. Yep. I just happened at an event, actually, because we were going through some of the steps. And initially, the person had a goal with things that they wanted to do. And then I was like, well, what if it were easy? What would you do? Something totally different. Mm-hmm. I was like, wait a second. We just had this whole conversation around this other stuff. But what if it were easy? Something different. And then we went through 
the process. It's so true. And, and, you know, after I read that story, I was telling you this before we started taping that when I read that, it unlocked something in me too, Mm. to be able to bring this to my significant other, to bring this to my kids, you know, as a mom of four, to be able to share it with them when, when their mind starts going down the rabbit hole of all of this stuff that can't be done or this, Mm -hmm. it kind of jolts your mind to say, well, what? What if it could be easy? Starts offering you suggestions to making it happen, right? And this can happen in your love life. It can happen in school. It can happen in careers. It can happen in business. I mean, you can use it for anything. Absolutely. Right? Absolutely. And so after you left the soap opera business, right? What did you do after that? Like, because you you were an actress for (laughs) years and years and years. That couldn't have been an easy decision for you to leave, you know, being an actress. Yes. No. No, it definitely wasn't. It was a progression, I mm-hmm. think, of things because, you know, I was on a little bit of a, a sort of foresight as when I was pregnant. There just weren't as many roles at that point. And so that was when I decided I got to just get certified as a coach just for fun because mm-hmm. I had studied so much mindset before that I was kind of the friend. Yeah. I bet you're that friend too. Yeah. Like people come to <laughs> come you for advice, yes. right? Yeah. And I was like, well, maybe I should figure out how to do this like for real. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so I was really doing it just to do something and... And I really loved it. And I had had a coach, so I knew the power of coaching. And so I started the coaching and afterwards I went back to acting and then I started coaching and then I sort of got into the speaker circle and I started speaking and then I was doing everything, but I kind of wasn't feeling like I was doing anything great. Mm -hmm. And I actually had a day where I was, I had been requested for an audition for a TV show. So it wasn't an offer, but it was down to like the final. Mm -hmm. It was like just a few people that were requested for this role and or a speaking gig. Okay. And so I had to make a decision. What am I going to (laughs) do? I felt like that was the universe's way of like, come on, what are you really going to do? And at that moment, I decided I'm going to do the speaking gig. And that was the moment. And uh, that was when I really just, all right, I'm going to lean into this. This is really what makes me happy. Mm -hmm. This is, as much as I I do love acting and I love the experience and the fun of all of that, I feel so much more fulfilled. And I think my true passion and mission and destiny, if you want to go that far, Mm -hmm. is really, it's designed to help. To be doing this. Yeah. So then you started off, you kind of retired from being an actress and Mm -hmm. started going into coaching. What did that look like? Did you just start seeing people right away? Did you set up a website? Like what what did that start looking like? Kind of. It was pretty messy in the beginning. Yeah. I think it always is, right? <laughs> yeah, right? It's like, okay, now what? <laughs> I had had a few people, but I come from, I was in the course that you had to do a certain amount of hours just Mm -hmm. to get the certification. And so some of those people wanted to keep going even beyond the hours that I was required to have. So they became a little, my first clients. Okay. And I I still bumped into a lot of actors. I was very much in that actor circle Mm -hmm. and there were a lot of actors that were struggling and I had used a lot of these tools to create success. So I did know that they could work and I was somebody that they could be like, well, okay, she could do it. Maybe I could too. Right. So that was where I started. I created a course. I decided I asked my teacher mm-hmm. if he would do a workshop with me because I was really scared of <laughs> doing something. I'm like, let me do something with someone who knows what they're doing. And so it was I had to have a winning audition. And so we ended up doing, it's actually the first time I combined kind of like an activity or something you embody mm-hmm. with a workshop. So we did all of the mindset around auditioning. And then I brought in a casting director and an agent for them to then go and audition for. Oh, cool. So that became the the experience. And uh, that was really cool. And from that, I also got some some clients. So, yeah. So then you build a website and, you know, the first one looks lousy. And (laughs) and you build and you grow. I actually have on my office wall, I have a tote bag of my very first logo of my very first website. And it's absolutely hideous. (laughs) But I keep it on my wall of a website that that I made back in 2005 Uh of my first website. It was like on a blog spot or something like that. Yes. I think somebody hand drew it and it's like a headless lady. I don't know why I very specifically said (laughs) I don't want her to have a 
head. So it's like from here down holding a baby. And that was the logo. Wow. But it's like, we have to start somewhere. You got to start. Right. And I think in this age of like social media and like seeing all of this stuff and everybody being big and famous and internet Mm -hmm. famous and TikTok and influencers, everybody wants to be an influencer. If you ask kids what they want to be, they want to be YouTubers. Yes. Right. That people have to start small. And I've talked about that on on this show before to be okay with sucking. Yes. <laughs> I'm yes. having the headless woman as right. your logo and being like I don't even think I had a logo. Yeah. So you were ahead <laughs> of me. At least you had a body. <laughs> but like we yeah. you know, to embrace that you don't have to be perfect yes. when you start this. Yes. And we all are just trying to figure it out. You know? <laughs> so I've been true. I've been doing this for eighteen years and I'm sure you've definitely been at this me too. For a I feel like time. I'm still figuring it out yeah. sometimes. Yeah. Yeah. Of we course. Always... And you evolve and you get better and you learn and you grow and exactly. it changes. And you personally shift and change a little. So it's it's so true. And I love what you said about having to make that choice between the audition and the speaking engagement. I actually remember a time in my career very similar to that where I had a speaking engagement in a national TV segment. Oh gosh. The speaking engagement (laughs) was for for my agency. Uh Uh-huh. And this and the TV show was for my old personal finance company. And it was when I was still running both at the same time. Uh Uh-huh. And I had to make a decision. And this was for the Rachel Ray show. And I called up Rachel Ray show and I said, I just want to let you know I'm retiring myself from television. Wow. And that was a paid, like I'm a member of sag after Yeah. So that was a paid gig. Yeah. I think it was like a $1,400. Right. People are like, and it was Rachel Ray. And it was right? Rachel Ray. <laughs> and I called them up and I said, I'm retiring myself from national television. I feel like I need to give this. Mm-hmm. to my clients, but I also felt like that's not who I am anymore. And then the show shut down like a couple weeks later. Wow. And I felt like, okay, that was confirmation right. for me personally. Like we have to make those really hard decisions in business sometimes, yes. right? Yes. To make a choice, like which way are you going to go? What fills you up? Yes. Right? Totally. And, and those are hard. Yes. <laughs> They're not easy. <laughs> but what if they were easy? I know. What if, but what if they were easy? <laughs> but that's where people, I get a lot of grief about that. People are like, but it's not easy. And I'm like, that's not really the point. Because there yes. are lots of hard things in our lives. I'm glad yeah. you brought that up because it's true. It is. Yep. It's not about like it making it easier being Pollyanna. Like it's easy. It's easy. Just pretend it's easy. Mm-hmm. It's not that. It's really just about sinking into it. And sometimes I find you have to ask it twice because mm-hmm. the first time you get that resistance, the second time you can kind of be like, okay, let me yep. like. Let me really sink into this and then answer. Yeah, it's so true. So bringing up that point of the not everything has to be Pollyanna and fairy right. tales and rainbows and all of that all of the time. When you decided to like write a book about this concept. That was not easy. No. <laughs> so the irony is that's the <laughs> that title. Is, that, <laughs> this is not easy, folks. Yes. you. It's like we were talking about this before the show. And it, it's funny. In all the interviews I've done on this podcast, this thing comes up over and over again about book babies. Uh-huh. And, and I call it book PTSD. Um, we, yes. Right? So, um, we get, we write the book and then we're like, and I even find in helping people launch their books is that we write the book and we're ready to publish it and we, we're just done. We're like, yeah, we put the book out. We don't want to talk about it anymore. <laughs> we're tired. <laughs> we don't want to go on a book tour. Like we, we want to like forget about it. That, but the hard part is the marketing. But yeah. so like when you wrote the book, what was your goal? Because what I love about this and there's QR codes, people can see this like in the book for activities. Uh So what was your thought process behind, first of all, why you wrote the book from like a business strategy? And then also, why did you write it with, with kind of that mindset with the movement sure. and all of that. So modicize is, is a piece of, of the whole, the big picture of the, my coaching business. And obviously it's, so it's sort of the foundation, the cornerstone of what I do and what differentiates me from a lot of other coaches. I see some, still do some straight coaching, but modicize is a big one. And it's a, maybe a little of a, because it's so different, sometimes people don't get exactly like, what is that? But it really is a hybrid of coaching and exercise. Mm-hmm. So it's putting a coaching process of a series of questions around a goal that you want to achieve that you do to movement so that you get out of your head and into your body. Because I believe our body is just this gold mine mm-hmm. of answers. We have the answers in us. We really do. And we stop it with it. It's so true. So see your headless picture? Yes. Was actually, you're on to something. I was on to something there. We need to get rid of our just minds. Just that, yeah. right. Well, there's the uh, book, like even the book, like The Body Keeps the Score, where it talks absolutely. about like trauma being 
in there. And I love the phrase, move a muscle, change a thought, right? Yes. Get up and move and walk around and it'll help your totally. mindset free itself. Absolutely. Yep. And all of that is is what's underneath that whole, my whole concept of modus size. And so I wanted it to be out there in a bigger way. Mm-hmm. And I wanted people to have the, a little bit of an experience of it. Hence the activities of like, okay, well, it's one thing to read about it, but exercise is hard to read. You know, you don't get it. Like yep. you have to embody it. And so what was the easiest way that people could do that? Here's a QR code, takes you to a video. It's a minute, right? Yep. It's not like a big class that you have to engage in. You can just get a sense of what that feels like in your body Mm -hmm. and what comes when you do that. How does that change things? How does that muscle movement change your thoughts and open up possibility? It's so true. And and there's one activity in here that I loved where you almost had us do a plank movement Mm -hmm. and and visualize if you're looking over your life, what would you want it to look like? Yes. Right? Explain to us a little bit about not only how we can do that in our life, but also in our business. I think, you know, a lot of people that watch this show are entrepreneurs, CEOs, business owners that might sometimes get stuck. Mm-hmm. And I think it can apply to both life and business, like how you talk 100%. about hundred percent. Yeah. It's interesting. That's come up so much lately. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and I feel like so often we get stuck because we keep thinking about all the things that aren't working or all the challenges or all the obstacles. And we're constantly trying to figure out, well, how do I, you know, what's that? Or why do I keep hitting up against this? And kind of asking some some of those questions that aren't necessarily helpful, where the opening up the vision of it is really the beginning of tapping into what the answers could be. Mm. And I think that we often feel, especially when we're trying to stretch the limit a little, because I find it with myself. If I'm like trying to take it to the next level or that plateau, like let's move it up a notch, you know? And then I'm like, well, what does that look like? I can almost feel like a tension in my body, you know? Well, I don't know because you don't, it's unknown. And yet that's exactly exactly where you want to move into because we want to see that. And even if you don't know exactly what it looks like, you want to feel it. You want to explore it. Like what could it look like? What's possible in that? Where would you maybe want to be? What would you, you want a city around you? Do you want a country around you? You know, like there are places that you can start to open up the picture because the more we have that vision, the easier it is to help with those next questions of what am I going to do next? Mm -hmm. And I really feel like the vision and the what you have. But what do you have, I think, is another huge part and a big question that most people don't ask. We go right into what do I need to do? Mm -hmm. But we're coming from a place of it's hard or stuck or whatever. We're not in a very good resourceful place. So we want to shift by seeing the possibility. And then what do you have? And you start looking at what you have. Mm -hmm. It's really, it's incredible. That's why gratitude lists are so powerful. Right. Right. Yeah. Right? And you're like, well, what do I have that can make this happen? It's like when you start outlining any experience, knowledge, skills, people you know, people you know who know people, like any of those things, they all matter. Mm -hmm. Desire, a computer, you know what I mean? We have all of these things and suddenly you start to feel a little more empowered and less stuck. Mm -hmm. And that's the perspective through which, the lens through which you want to try to solve your problems. Yeah, I absolutely love that. And I think, you know, one of the, I just want to read a piece in here. I think one of the biggest things that keeps us from this is that one word fear, (laughs) right? Yes. Um, And it takes so many different forms. But I think we make excuses. We find reasons we don't want to. We procrastinate. So the roots of these fears are failing, disappointing others, being wrong, losing what we have, the unknown, the fear of success, stepping outside of your comfort zone, financial insecurity, letting people down, losing people, being judged. I know I definitely in the past have dealt with that fear of success, Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you know, letting... Will success change me? Yes. You know, I think that's a big one that I personally struggled with. And, you know, when you say, well, what if it were easy? Fear can like slap that right in the face, don't you think? So say more. So if you say, what if it were easy? If you're afraid of even that phrase. Right. Of even the possibility yes. of it being easy. Yes. If you're just afraid of the outcomes of if it were easy. Right. Of what could happen, that'll, you won't even start. You won't start, which mm-hmm. is why I think you, sometimes you need to ask a question. 
second time. Right. right. <laughs> it's yeah. the first time. That fear yeah. probably will come up. <laughs> yeah. and the first thing I always hear is, but it's not, you yeah. know? And it's like, okay, and what if it were? What would you do? And that at least gets it out on paper or out in the world or out of your mouth, out of your buried inside mm-hmm. into possibility, into the openness. And from there, anything to use Marie Forleo's, right? Anything is figure outable. Right, right. <laughs> exactly. But I think it is true. Once you sort of identify it, then you can start to take the steps to figure out how to do it. Right. That and makes so, sense. So yes, yes, it can. And I would say, all right, fear, here we go. You're going to sit right here for a second mm-hmm. just while I ask this question. <laughs> right. You know, like don't try to stuff it down or pretend it's not there, you know, and eventually we could come around and maybe I'm a big proponent of kind of making fear your friend mm-hmm. because there's a lot of energy in fear. I remember when I was coaching, I kind of love this story. <laughs> it's, there was an exercise, a sort of make fear your friend kind of exercise that I do in coaching. Coaching. And uh, the origin of the story was back in World War One. There were all these soldiers that were placed on these micro Asian islands. So they're really tiny islands. And when the war ended, they didn't get the message right away that the war was over. So they're still there, you know, all like ready to fight, you mm-hmm. know, and the war was over. And that's often how it is for us. Oh, I love that analogy. These I love it. People, they were there. They showed up to fight some war that probably was happening in our lives at some point, maybe in childhood, in all, you know, mm-hmm. could have been tiny, it could have been big, but that war is over. Mm -hmm. And so we need to sort of assure, like, it's okay, the war's over, but you got a ton of energy. So why don't you come along for this ride? For this ride (laughs) and help push me through this one. Yes. And so that's, I like to use it because the more you push it away, sometimes the more it's like, well, what about me? Yeah, that's (laughs) true. Well, and we're going to do a little activity, right? Where Mm -hmm. you're going to show us one of your activities. And I think this might be a good one to help with fear too, about being strong. Yeah. Right? Yes. So you want to show us, tell okay. us about it and then show us what we're so going to do. So we're going to do a very simple one that you could do at your desk anywhere, anytime, right? Mm-hmm. And we're going to use the what do you have, I think, message on okay. this one because I think it hits two because the first half of the book is the process and what do you have is a big part, a big question in the process. But we also have these superpowers within us and the strong you mm-hmm. is one of them. And the more we physically feel strong, the more we mentally feel strong. Mm -hmm. and just overall feel more courageous, more confident, more resilient. And so it has that dual effect. So this exercise has kind of targets both of those because you will essentially get stronger. At the same time, you're also going to really look at what you have. Okay. So we're going to just, I'll just stand up. Okay. And uh, we're going to use the desk. Okay. We're going to do some push-ups. Okay. And if the desk is too hard for you, you could also do it against a wall, right? This is meant to be for everybody. This one's not boot camp. This one's not boot camp, people. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So step back as far as you're comfortable. Ideally, you do want to try to stay in that straight line, that plank, so you don't want to be up too much and you definitely don't want to arch your back too much. Okay. So you're going there. So what is the goal that you, let's just choose one for the heck of it. Okay. What is my goal? Yeah. What's it okay. So let's say a million dollars this year. A million dollars yeah. this year? Okay. Yeah. All right. So what do you have to make that million dollars happen? And here we're going to do okay. a push-up. And with each push-up, you're going to tell me what you have. Okay, so Ready? to say I have a company that can provide and do that. Nice. What I else have do you have? Resources to do it. Great. I have a great team that mm-hmm. can provide it. Nice. I have a computer. Yes. <laughs> Two more. You got this. You um, got it. I have. Uh, an amazing podcast. Yes. And I have an upcoming TV show. Woo! Yay. All right. Okay. Yes. <laughs> okay, so that one is is to help you bring out all the possibilities yes. of of how you can do your goal. Well, so how do you feel just reflecting on all the things you have. It made me be like, okay, I, I got this. And then we're going to look at, okay, well then what do you need to right. go specifically make that goal happen? But you're coming from an empowered place yep. as opposed to an overwhelmed or scared or disempowered place. And I feel energetic about it. Yeah. You know what I mean? I feel like energy flowing through my body instead of more right. sedentary Yeah, stuff. like, I'm so tired. Thank 
thinking about all the work that's going to get me yes. there. You know what I mean? Yes. There's like win, win, win. So you got energized. You got a little stronger. Mm-hmm. And now you're like, oh, I've got all these. Th- Actually, I really do have all these yeah. things. That's pretty good. And if you, you know, did another five, you come up with another five. Yeah. Because you got tons. Yeah. Right? And then you're ready to move into the next. I love that. Yeah. So all of these principles, like when you started, you're like, okay. I'm going to write a book because I want to have everything in here. You know, what was your goal? Like, did you have like a sales goal? Did you have a business goal? You know, we have all have different goals for writing the book. Yeah. Obviously, you probably use the principles in the book to get you through the process of writing it. <laughs> oh, my gosh. You, I, it. you know, it's funny. I use what do you have? Because what do you have is one. Oh, my gosh. So I I actually came up with Modicize. I, I probably filmed the last DVD known mm-hmm. to mankind. <laughs> It won an award, but that's, well, that's cool. good. <laughs> but I, because originally I was, you know, I wanted a motorized class that people could do over and over again. And so I was there with my team in the office and we would always go to this place across the, in a building next door to sort of test things and, and get in and physically do it. So we were thinking that's where we were going to film it. I, I don't even know. I keep, like, as I tell you the story, I'm just like, I don't even know the thought process that got us to the ridiculousness <laughs> of what we were saying, <laughs> but we were like, well, that room is kind of dark, so we need lights, but we need it to be a clear space, and so we need lights coming in from the outside. We literally were like, for a moment, had to talk about like putting a crane on Eighth oh, Avenue. Oh my goodness! <laughs> it's like, <laughs> <laughs> right? If you've ever been in New York, you know that is ridiculous, like, right? Gazillions of dollars. We're not putting a crane on Eighth yeah. Avenue, like just ridiculous. Mm-hmm. And my husband walked in. I'm like, we're trying to figure out this lighting thing. And I even come from entertainment. So that's why right. it's even more ridiculous. But anyway, I like got this crane on 8th Avenue. He's like, what? <laughs> <laughs> He's like, what if it were easy? Right? Well, actually, you know, he was like, you know, I know this little modicized process. Yeah. Maybe you should try it uh-huh. right now, you know. And we and he left and we were both like, oh my gosh, we didn't even do the what do you have? What do we have? Oh, I don't know. Our office is on the same floor as a production company even if we don't use them to film it we have access to all of the information that we need right now Mm -hmm. location how to actually light something Mm -hmm. this all these things one thing that came from what do you have that i literally didn't think about it was so dumb but i write about that because it's such a great you know like yeah here i'm writing a book that has this question in it i'm not asking it right (laughs) and it's leading me down well they say like sometimes things are too close to you so you can't read them right exactly but so i had originally i had already tested the process I had beta tested a lot. I had a lot of people that were doing it when I was filming the DVD plus clients afterwards, but I wanted to get it to my goal with the book. I am answering your question. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> it was a long way there. <laughs> I like the way we got yeah. there. It's okay. <laughs> Is uh, that I wanted it to reach more people. Mm-hmm. I wanted the idea, the concept to be out there in a bigger, broader way. And, you know, many people say books are that calling card, right? It's yep. an expensive business card. Yeah. It is. <laughs> but that was the goal yeah. in, in doing a book. And it, it opens up speaking opportunities so that I can reach more people. So mm-hmm. it's an impact and opportunity move. And do you feel like it reached the goal that you set? I think it is in process okay. of reaching it. Yeah. I am seeing that start to open doors. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Yeah, I feel like people have to see it as a journey, yes. right? As that it's not launch the book and then six weeks later, it's like, oh, okay, the book's done. No, it's like a journey of continuously pushing it and selling it and yes. branding it and and all of that. And I think that, and I kind of knew that. I had been told that, but boy, did I experience yes. that, you know? And I, as soon because you have the big launch party and, you know, you're doing all this stuff. And then all of a sudden, there's a moment where you're like, oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> now what? Um, and, you know, for me, I did the whole book tour and I was out doing a lot with it. So I kind of hit that place come January, mid January of like, okay, yeah. well, that was fun. Now what? Yeah. And so, I don't think you're alone in that. I think that, and that's kind of uh, the big reason I I wanted to do this show is I think so Mm -hmm. many people are in that 
that phase of yeah. it's very common. Yes. You know, as I've written many books and work with a lot of authors, we get to a certain phase of the book process and then we just are like, nothing's happening or I am not selling as much. And there's this huge like, I don't want to say letdown, but it feels but almost- it feels a little it like, feels a like, a, like a little bit like a letdown. Yeah. And to realize that there's strategies that we can do now to keep it in movement, right? Yeah. Like coming on podcasts like this, but also speaking engagements and social media and sending it out to certain people and asking people to post pictures about it and all, you know, all of right. that kind of stuff. So with... And I, I, I mean, I, I want to just sort of tag on to that because I, I really do think that feeling is real. Mm -hmm. And I have talked to many authors and they, as you have, and yep. I think everybody has, there's a moment where you have that feeling. Yep. <laughs> yep. And I think you have to come back to what was the whole purpose of it to exactly. begin with, which you asked. And most authors also put it out there for, mm -hmm. so that it can be a calling card so that you can use it so that you can get in and that you can. And so you have to remember, oh, right. So that's what it's there for. Yep. So now I need to use it for that. Yep. It's not over. It's the beginning. It's, it's That's such a good point because it, you have to ground yourself back to the initial goal. Yes. Because it's so easy to get wrapped up in like, oh my gosh, this person was on national television 18 times yeah. and they, you know, were on these huge podcasts and, and they hit the New York Times list and they're doing a 25 state book tour. But is that your goal? Right. Is that your goal? And, you know, my book, my last book launched when I had like a three-year-old. Right. <laughs> and it's like, I, I was can't not. do that. That's not even an option for right. me to do that. Yes, there's certain things, but the goal for me has always been for books to be a business card into uh -huh. whatever the next phase of the business is. Right. right. Yeah. So talk to me a little bit about what you see kind of the next steps are for you when it comes to, because I know you do a lot of presenting and speaking as mm -hmm. well. Right. So how are you using the book for that purpose? So it's opening more doors mm -hmm. for that purpose. And that is a great thing about having a book because now people are, oh, there's a little credibility behind you. Yep. And I think the concept is a little bit more understood because now it's something people can read. It's something that's real. It's something you have articles or, you know, podcasts or something about. They're like, oh, now I can see how that can help us. Right. And so that's what it's doing. And that's what I'm very much working on right now because ultimately I would like to do more speaking. I'd like to have some of my own live events ultimately. Yeah. Yeah. That would be great. I would yeah. come to one of them. Yeah. Sign me up. Cool. I'm coming. I'm coming. Good. We'll, we'll do power And I moves. used to do, yeah. before this, it was the first kind of mind-body thing that I did was a, these Modi adventures. So I would do a workshop on a mindset thing and then go do some kind of adventure that embodied that mindset. Oh, I love that. Yeah. So it, the first one I was actually challenged by a friend to do was uh, climb the wall, like mm -hmm. a rock wall. And so what's the wall that you keep bumping into mm. and how can we get to the top? So that's the workshop. And then we go and we climb a wall mm -hmm. and we do the rock climbing wall. And we did a kayaking to the Statue of Liberty. And it's like riding the currents of your life. You know, what are what are they and mm -hmm. how do you reach the freedom? And letting go, we trapezed. And so I did a love your body pole dancing. And so they're all like themed kind of activities with the mindset put in with it. So I'm bringing those back and in my live events, so I would like to do oh, those. But I'm going to actually do the wall one again oh, I love in that. March. I yeah. love that. I'm interested to hear because I sometimes struggle with this because a lot of my media attention and all of that was from like my previous mm -hmm. business, right? Mm -hmm. I'm eager to hear what does um, it feel like to have, you know, this big career in TV, mm -hmm. right? I'm sure it boosts your credibility in the in the sense of like you've been on these amazing soap operas, right? right? And right. You're, you're like a celebrity. Right. <laughs> but then do you ever feel like let's let that go and let me be who I am now? Or do you feel like that's a part of my life and this helps me? Like, yeah. I, I always kind of wondered about how that would look for you. Yeah. So when I started, I didn't mention it at all. Really? Not okay. at all. In fact, I went through my entire coaching certification and at the very end, some girl came up to me. She's just like, I think I used to watch you on TV. <laughs> oh, you're like busted. <laughs> She said, I recognize you and I looked your stuff up, but you never talk about it. Mm -hmm. And it was a year-long program. 
Oh my goodness. That was a whole year. (laughs) Whole year of very intimate conversations when you're doing coaching stuff. And so I never, I never talked about it. And so, yeah, 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 yeah. And then as I started to move into speaking, I still didn't speak about it. And I had a coach, a friend, I think, had had introduced me to a coach and she had been really pressing me to like, I think you really need to talk about it. Like, I don't think you should hide it. So she had mentioned it to the coach and the Mm -hmm. coach is like, you're insane. (laughs) (laughs) We're not bringing that up. Exactly. Like, oh, I was so hammered on it. And so... It's like, all right, I guess I have to do this. So at first it was a have to, like mm-hmm. I mean, it's a should. I guess I will do this and I'll put it up there, you know. And now I've really learned to embrace it. Mm-hmm. And in, in fact, even through the process, I think, of doing interviews around the book specifically because it comes up a lot, I've really seen how much that the, it all makes sense. Yeah. And how all of that was the foundation for where I am right now and how many tools that I used, not only on the mindset side, but also in the acting side that I use in my practice and in, in, in my business right now. And so I've really learned to not only appreciate and want to put it out there, but to really be grateful for yeah. it and be like, oh, wait a second. That wasn't a mistake. Mm-hmm. I wouldn't be here if it weren't for that. So it's not like I'm trying just to capitalize on it. Like it actually was a part and an important part of my journey. Yeah, it's so true. And I think I think it adds a lot to where you are now to be able to say everything that you've gone through, right. and been through an experience Yeah, to come out of it and say, I made the choice to say yes to this yeah. and no to that. Like that's powerful. Yeah. How many people would love to have been in your shoes? Right. Right. To be called for that audition. Likewise. Yeah. yeah. It is. Right. It's that moment of truth. Mm -hmm. And to say, no, that's not what fills my cup anymore. Mm -hmm. Like Mm -hmm. I want to do something different. And the courage that it takes to say that, I think it's huge. And I'm I'm grateful that you share it because I think it's great. From somebody who pitches people out, I'm sure it helps you get a lot of media too, I would think. Yeah. I think it does. (laughs) It does. I would say as a publicist, like you better be putting that out there. Yeah, exactly. (laughs) Are you insane? I'd get that from you too, right? Exactly. I would say I'd tell your publicist like yes girl you're doing a good job you know yeah. for sure definitely um, so what are you, like if you were to think back on like the book the process because I'm trying to see like your publisher was it a traditional pub like a traditional book deal or did you do a hybrid I did a hybrid on okay this. yeah yep so what is some things that you wish you had done differently I wish it didn't take so long <laughs> <laughs> How long did it take you? Oh, gosh. Uh, well, Do you want years. it to, years? Okay. It took years. Yeah. It did. Uh, it was completely and totally rewritten three times. Okay. Um, I was actually supposed to put it out during the pandemic. Okay. And then, well, it hit. And so mm-hmm. that seemed like a dumb idea. But instead of just like holding off, it got rewritten. Yeah. <laughs> and I think that is a thing with a book. Like, are you ever done? Yeah. You know, if I could rewrite it another time, I'm sure. But at a certain point, you have to say it's done. Yeah. And it will go in the next one. If there is a next one, right? And so, yeah, and I try not to dwell too much on it because there's really no point. You Mm -hmm. know, it took the time that it took. And I think the timing for me right now, even in my family life, my kids are a little older, so I have a little bit more leeway to travel and do more of what I want to do. So I think the timing was right, but I had to sort of accept that it took a lot of years. And I don't know that it has to take as many years as it took me. Well, a lot of, even when we're dealing with traditional publishers now, now, mm-hmm. they're giving them years. Yeah. Two years to write the book or right. three years from when you sign to yeah. when it comes out, depending on who you're working with. Mm-hmm. Uh, so, I mean, you might not be too far off, but it's it's hard because you, you look at it and you're like, oh, I, I want it to be perfect. You, you want know? it to be perfect. Be perfect. <laughs> and I did have actually some traditional publishers who were interested, but they wanted the platform to be bigger. So there was mm-hmm. also a little bit of a holding of it to build that. That yeah. was like a moving target. Yeah. <laughs> Yes. by next year, that number is no longer that number. It's this number. And mm-hmm. then you add it to this number and to that number. And at a certain point, it became like, all right, that's just not maybe not the game that I want to play because that's holding me back right. from some arbitrary number is holding me back. So it's time to move. Yeah. And 
you know, it's I've done it all three ways. I did self publishing, hybrid, mm-hmm. and traditional. Yeah, and to have experience, and now my fourth book is going back to hybrid. So, Interesting. Yeah. Oh, so, that is interesting. Why? Um, I just think the traditional model. It's like I've been there, done that. Mm-hmm. Right. I got the big book deal with Hachette. Yeah. Loved the process. Learned the process. But after your advance, you know, unless you sell maybe tens or hundreds of thousands of copies of books, you know, I got a pretty large advance. So right. getting a ton of money back after that, you don't see a big return on on that investment. I sold a pretty large mm-hmm. amount of books on my third book, but I still didn't see a big return on my investment after that. I still had to hire my own publicists. Mm-hmm. You know, they're just their PR firms at in-house are not great. So right. you even though you get PR with them. They're right. not really that great. So to me, I want control yeah. over it. Yeah. All I need help with is the editing mm-hmm. and the distribution. That's really all I right. I really need help with. I have an in-house PR firm yeah. in my company. And right. I, <laughs> I really know how to market a book, you know? Yeah. So it was an easy decision to go back to hybrid. That's great. Yeah. And that was the hybrid decision versus a self because mm-hmm. it was, I wanted the distribution too. Yeah. And yeah. that is a great advantage yeah. with that option. It is. And I just think there's so many things you don't know about it. Yeah. That you at least hybrid can answer the questions and do the ISBN numbers mm-hmm. and take mm-hmm. care of the formatting and all of that. Right. I mean, I've I've done the go into Barnes and Noble and find your book and sign it. Uh-huh. And, yeah, yeah. You know, and and it's great. I do not take that back for anything. Yeah. But I you know, I'm just in a different place right now with right. different, different goals. goals. Yep. Exactly. And and that's the thing is I, the last book, I had different goals than this book. Yeah. And so this one is more of a lead gen model Mm -hmm. um, and rebranding myself in, you know, my last books are all in personal finance. So this is more of a rebranding myself with being a book coach and all of that now. So it's a different goal and you have to have different modifications based on On your goals, on your goals, you know? Right. So I, I, I I'm excited about it, but that's very exciting. I love that. I love, I love, I love the intentionality Mm -hmm. behind that too because I think sometimes it gets lost again in the world of yep. the, you know we want this and this and yep. this and it all seems great unless it doesn't serve you yeah and so it's so important to stay on track with what actually is the intention the goal to begin with exactly and to be strategic mm-hmm. you know I meet so many authors who are like yeah my book's coming out next month I'm like great what are you gonna do <laughs> yeah. they're like we haven't figured that out yet and we're gonna you know we're gonna send out some emails we're gonna do that I'm like that's great what's your goal well we want to be USA Today best seller. And I'm like, that's not going to happen. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, but I know how to make that happen. happen right, right. I can tell you how to make that happen. And it's a very strategic thing that is very repeatable. Uh-huh. But I'm telling you, if you don't have a strategy that started a couple months ago, right, you need to really take a look at that. Definitely. And I think it's an important piece of the whole puzzle when it comes to writing a book of what is the intention? What is your goal? Yeah. Does it fit in with your overall brand and right. your goal for that? Thinking about for you, like when you're doing your live events, like making sure the book is included in every ticket, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. And then you sell more books. And I think that that it would be super amazing for book sales and and all of that for you and branding and yeah. I'm excited yeah. for you. <laughs> I'm excited for you. So what's next for you? Like you've got so much going on. You talked about the live, you know, doing an event and all of that. Yeah. But what's what do you feel like is next for the business and for your goals? In many ways, I do feel like that is what's next. Mm-hmm. And, you know, it's uh, it just sort of I feel like it's really starting. But it is my goal by the end of this year is to have a live event that incorporates the book, the mm-hmm. process, the the whole like a full on experience. Yeah, that's really really what I want. I have a, several things leading up to it: speaking gigs with some companies, and I have a retreat that I'm doing, and I've got a conference and a couple other things that are on deck. So those are all great, and I'm looking to expand that as well. And we'll do some online programs. That's probably where I get a little like indecisive. <laughs> <laughs> but what if it were easy? <laughs> What if it were easy? I bet you you have people say that to you all the time. Always. It's so easy to like be throw like, it back so at hard. you. What if it were easy? If it were easy, yeah. I would do both. I yes. would do both. Um, and I and I am doing both. I think I have to strategically decide yes. where does the energy go mm-hmm. first to really make sure that it lands. Yeah. So and I think I've I've worked a bit on the online. I've had a, a, quite a few online courses actually, but I, I kind of want to get out. Yeah. I want to get out in the world. Well, you know, maybe I, I, I don't think know. We'll see. Maybe of- we'll bring some television back in again. Yeah, a little. do it. Do yeah. It. <laughs> Maybe. <Yeah. laughs> 
right, I'll follow your path yeah, and do yeah, a little do it. Uh, some hosting stuff and 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 that. You know, I think um, one of one of the things that we were talking before the show about my strategy with my book and this podcast and my business right. and starting a TV show of all of that was I thoroughly enjoy just talking to people yeah. and hosting. Mm-hmm. And television and podcasts. And I think one of the things that COVID taught me personally was I'm not good in isolation. Yes. And I need to be around like-minded people. Uh huh. And so I also love to build people up. Yeah. I love to build people's platforms up. And so what a better way than to get to talk to awesome people like you and we mm-hmm. can rise together yeah. here or on a TV show right. and get to meet amazing people who mm-hmm. are launching books, who are coming through town on media tours, who have amazing recipes, who have amazing yeah. tips and tricks that for the years that I've been on TV, mm-hmm. enjoyed that. What if I could create the same type of dream for other people? That would just be a dream for me. And so your book actually helped in inspire me. Mm. I wanted to let you know Aww. about finally pulling the plug on the TV show. Ah! Yeah. Yes. So that's, <laughs> I love yeah, that. I wanted to tell you that, wow. that it's been something that has been on, I told you before the show, I've been given a lot of opportunities for yeah. shows in the beginning, you right. know, for years. When I was given this opportunity, that thought of what if it were easy, uh-huh. you know, because I, I live about five hours outside of the city. So oh, I have wow. to fly here. Oh, wow. To do these. Yeah. And I figured out a way. It's like, what if it were easy? What if I could just fly in once a month and do everything in three days, just once a month? Wow. And I figured it out and it's easy now. That's so great. Giving that question opened my brain up for the possibility mm-hmm. of making it all work out. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Where instead of looking at all of the things that make it not work. Exactly. So I wanted to thank you for that. Oh, well, thank you. Yeah. I'm so happy yeah. to hear that. Yeah. Yes. You make and me tear so up on my own show. <laughs> oh my God. I yeah. know. It makes me tear up. I'm like, that's so great. And yeah. it means you get to help more people like that. Isn't that yeah. the beauty of what it we is. do? It has this beautiful domino effect. It does. And it does. Wow. And now we get to like share and help other people. Yeah. And that to me is the beauty of entrepreneurship and business and yeah. life. And yeah. the world just goes around in circles. So it does. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Wow. So that's why I'm like, I'll, we'll talk about it on camera. Yeah. Because you're, you're like asking me those questions. <laughs> I'm like, we'll get to it on camera. Because um, it really, I, I was I was telling your publicist when she was reaching out to me, I'm like, I love her book. Like, and I wasn't joking. Like, I'm reading it. I've got highlights in it. So why don't you tell people where where they can find you? I, I also want to say, like, when you're getting hired for businesses, because a lot of businesses watch the show, how can they bring you into their organization? Like, what kind of programs do they do? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Oh, do you do that? Maybe they can hire you for their organization. Right. So I do, I do three levels. So it's one, I can do sort of like a bigger kind of event type thing where I'm more speaking the concept of how can we do this, the process. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'll get people up moving to some extent with that as well. Then I can go deeper in with teams that have a specific goal okay. so that I can work just with them. And then I also work with a lot of, of like the top, the upper level management, like one-on-one. Okay. Those are sort of the three different tiers okay. in which I could do it. That's good to know. So if anybody wants to mm-hmm. hire her, yeah. Yay. <laughs> um, definitely. So how can people reach out to you and find you? Uh, obviously, everybody should go and buy the book because yes. it's it's it really is amazing. So how can people reach out to you? So you could go to my site, uh, soniasatra.com. Mm-hmm. I'm also on all the social media channels. So Instagram, Facebook, X. X. <laughs> I know. I always I know, so like confused. Twitter X. Um, I don't even LinkedIn. know. Like, do you call it a, it's not like a tweet anymore. What do we call it? An X? Like, I don't even know how to say that. I don't know how people say that either. Yeah. I know. And and people are trying to be onto threads now. Yep. So that might, that's probably next. But yeah, most of those. I'm mostly active on LinkedIn, Facebook, Instagram. Okay. And yeah, you can email me, reach me, reach out to me. Awesome. Um, and I would love to talk to anyone and at any level, like in terms of whatever goals they have. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for being here today. Thank you. This, uh, thank you for writing such an amazing book. Thank you and so for, much. for putting yourself out there and and saying, make you know, this phrase really can change your life. Yeah. My whole family is sick of it. <laughs> but it's only because I'm pushing them out of their comfort zone. <laughs> there you go. That's it. <laughs> but my, my kids know, like, I'm just 
I'm I'm definitely like that mom. I'm like, you can do it, you know. Yes. Um, and so now that I have a different phrase, it it, it just unlocks possibility. It it does. Yeah, it does. I know my kids are sick of it too. Yeah, but you know, but you know I what? Not, it still works. It still works. That's the thing. And 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 it's funny, you know, that I was saying that my my boyfriend. I started telling it to him if he gets in a mood or whatever, and he can now finish my my words. <laughs> what is what? It, what if it were easy and and it really has helped him it really has because yeah. he can pause and be like yeah right what if yeah because a lot of times we don't give ourselves the permission mm -hmm. to question that yes i totally agree yeah thank you so much for being here thank you yeah. thank you <laughs>